Jamie Court. Uh, I am uh, president of Consumer Watchdog, and I'm here, uh, very proud to be here with uh, Brown's Last Chance Coalition to announce a letter going from what's now 791 groups to Governor Brown calling on him to keep the oil in the ground in California. This is really a critical moment in California's history, and I'm so glad to have the groups here who are going to speak with us today, and I'll be introducing them one by one. But we have Physicians for Social Responsibility. We have Communities for a Better Environment. We have Stand LA. We have Food and Water Watch. Um, and those are the groups who are just a small number of the groups. Our colleagues today are in the Moscone Center right now at the same time. Because in five months from tomorrow, September 12th, Governor Brown is going to convene a global climate summit. Our colleagues at the Moscone Center, my colleagues behind us, and the other people who are near uh, part of the nearly 800 groups who are calling on Brown to freeze all oil and gas permits today and find a way to roll back current oil operations and infrastructure, we are saying to the governor today, step up. Find a way to address fossil fuels if you want to be a climate leader. Climate leaders don't support drilling without limits. They don't support drilling without a way to get us out of drilling. And Governor Brown, unfortunately, whose motto for the climate summit is step up, hasn't stepped up. He's falling down until he deals with a way to keep oil in the ground in Los Angeles, in these urban fields behind us, and all across the state in offshore waters where he's approved more than 225 new oil leases while condemning the Trump administration and all throughout California. Today all we're saying to Governor Brown is we want to join with you in, this, in solidarity at the Global Action Summit on September 12th, but we can't do it until you take on the supply problem we have. Not just limiting demand, but to limit supplies. We, fossil fuels are the number one driver of, uh, of, of climate change, and we have to address them. And the nearly 800 groups who are writing the governor today are saying, please be part of the solution, not part of the problem. Please, governor, be the leader we know you can be. Step up and help us fix this problem we're going to hear about. Today we're going to hear from some people who live near oil fields, like the ones behind me. We're standing uh, behind the largest urban oil field in America, the Inglewood oil field. And people who live within, you know, thousands of, 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 of feet of oil wells like this, people whose kids play soccer just up the road at a soccer field, you know, within a thousand feet of an oil field, are at risk of health problems. So this is a human problem. This isn't an esoteric problem solved by world elites sitting in a windowless room in San Francisco. This is about the people who live near these fields, and we're going to hear from them today. And we're going to hear from the community members today who are pleading with the governor to listen to their stories, to get out of the windowless rooms, to start to examine what he really wants to do and wants the world to do and realize fossil fuels are part of the problem. So first, I'm going to bring up from Physicians for Social Responsibility, Martha Arguello, who is going to talk about the health impact of living near the largest oil urban oil field in America or any other uh, oil or gas well and talk a little about what this coalition that's come together today is saying to the governor in terms of health and human rights. Martha? Good morning, my name is Marta Dina Arguello. I'm the Executive Director of Physicians for Social Responsibility. I am also a representative and a member of the Brown's Last Chance Coalition and the proud co-chair of Standing Together Against Neighborhood Drilling. And we're here today in the shadow and the invisible fumes of LA's largest oil field. If you start to feel a headache, you'll understand why. Those headaches, bloody noses, sore throats, uh, are things that People who live within 500 feet, 300 feet, actually an arm's length from these oil fields, experience every day, 24 hours a day, as these facilities operate. And we're here to tell the governor that climate leadership means standing with us and stopping oil drilling. We want you to lead by stopping all new permits for oil and gas, stopping more fossil fueling 
infrastructure and petrochemical projects throughout the California, throughout California. We actually call on the governor to stand with communities and workers for a future of California that is fueled by wind and solar. We can actually do that. We can actually have a clean economy that promotes community health. And that is the absolute need that communities have. We can treat your asthma, we can end up in the ER room, there's many diseases that we can treat, but we can prevent them. We can stop the public health crisis that exists for the thousands of people that live next to oil wells. The majority of these people are people of color who do not often have access to health care, delay health care decisions because rent is due or another bill is due. And yet we continue to put their lives and their lives of their children and the lives of future generations at risk by conducting this practice that happens in Los Angeles that doesn't happen anywhere else. Wells this close to communities. This is not what a healthy community looks like. And it's time the governor joined us and calling for real climate leadership. We need to have, uh, protect public health and safety of our climate and our natural resources and real solutions that are up for the actual challenge that we have. Thank you. Thank you, Martha. I want to bring in uh, Ashley Hernandez, who's a resident of Wilmington, who's very close to oil fields and has suffered the impact, as has her family. Ashley. Hello, my name is Ashley Hernandez. I am a organizer with Communities for a Better Environment, but more importantly, I'm here today as a Wilmington resident. Uh, living in Wilmington, one of the things that I definitely didn't know growing up was that I was living not only in a ticking time bomb, but I was living in what is known as ground zero to big oil. Wilmington is also the home of around 56,000 other residents and also the third largest oil field in the nation. We're at the top five percentage of communities with the, highest air, um, with the highest air pollution. And in my community alone, we have over 6,000 oil wells. That's more than half of what's in Los Angeles. These oil wells are near our schools, near our churches, near our daycares, directly in front of our homes. Frontline residents like myself represent the health burdens of living near oil. And I can tell you now that we deserve better. My parents bought their first home in Wilmington that happens to be 500 feet from the largest oil drilling site west of the Mississippi River. From their room, they can see the large drilling tower. In their home, they can feel the tremors. And outside, they have to deal with the insufferable soot that comes down on all outside objects. I was one of the kids um, growing up in Wilmington that was dealing with the headaches and the nosebleeds, um, the slow heart palpitations. My friends were dealing with the asthma and respiratory issues. And now as I'm older and, and working in my community with youth, I see the same trends. The stories have changed a little bit. The tones become a little bit more drastic because now we're dealing with stories of cancer. We're dealing with stories of miscarriages. We're talking about how many times we've had to go to emergency rooms dealing with the issues that we have in our community. I thought it was scary living in a community that is a ticking time bomb, but what's really been terrifying to me has been the moments where I learned the impacts are affecting the people that I care for the most, or the moments where I've had to drive a student 30 minutes to an emergency room as she was having an asthma attack. Nobody should have to have any of these situations happen to them. Our community isn't safe and our health isn't thriving in the heart of the harbor. And as many of us know, it's not just an issue in Wilmington, but throughout the state of California. This is no coincidence. This is deliberate environmental racism. If our governor won't tolerate discrimination from our current administration, then we as frontline communities shouldn't have to tolerate the environmental injustices happening in our frontline neighborhoods. Let me make this clear. Living, growing, and praying near oil drilling is no sanctuary. Governor Brown is not a champion for our frontline communities and is perpetuating environmental racism. We deserve justice at every level, including environmental justice. We need to address the issue of neighborhood drilling and we need to act. We need to see action from those we put in power in order for us to really gain environmental justice. Today marks the beginning of Brown's last chance 
because now is the time to act and end the hypocrisy and racism that has been affecting our California and protecting our frontline neighborhoods. Thank you. Thank you. We want to bring up two other people who've been impacted in various ways by oil and gas drilling, but 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 in particular, the very field we stand behind, the Inglewood uh, oil fields, the largest urban field in America, which is set to expand if we don't stop it. So we're very fortunate to have a uh, councilman elect. He was elected last night, Daniel Lee, whose constituents are affected by these very fields. So when Governor Brown is being asked to stop all new drilling, he is being asked to help Councilman Daniel Lee's constituents who are suffering grave health problems because of living so near these very fields we stand behind. Thank you. Uh, thank you, and I will speak uh, just very briefly. Um, as was mentioned before, these oil fields affect the health and safety of people within my district, but also within the districts that are outside of my purview. The Inglewood oil field, there only there's only 10% in Culver City, and that is the part that I represent. But 90% is within uh, unincorporated Los Angeles County. So it is incumbent upon both the governor and our Los Angeles County Board of Supervisors uh, to forge a new path forward for this land. I accepted the offer of Sentinel Peak Resources to take a tour of the oil field prior to my election. Uh, and I accepted it, uh, I tried to accept it with an open heart, with, with uh, an idea that maybe I'm not right, you know, maybe there are other things going on at this oil field that I don't know about. Uh, but my background in environmental organizing and environmental justice organizing makes me think no matter what, you know, uh, no matter what I saw in the tour or no matter what I heard from people, uh, is there some other thing that we can do with this oil field? Is there some other purpose that we can have for this land? And in general, and I've been speaking about this for the last four to five years, why is this not like a solar farm? I've been uh, uh, told by uh, the uh, company's representatives that perhaps this could be developed into land for uh, a housing development, but with such a long history of oil and oil development and the deleterious effects of uh, oil on people's children's uh, asthma, older people's uh, brain uh, cancer and other types of uh, horrible diseases, it, it seems um, dangerous to develop this in any other way um, that is not very specifically focused on new clean energy. Uh, we've, we, 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 we know the deleterious effects of oil and fossil fuels. The, the research is not vague on that point. Uh, Los Angeles is often talked about as Tinseltown, but we know it was built on oil. And that, that, that is something that, you know, we need to accept and then get over. Uh, right now, uh, we're, we are, we are in the 21st century and we need to look to a clean energy future, a clean energy future that prioritizes, uh, solar energy. Uh, we live in Southern California, a place of limitless sunshine. We need to use that energy to push our country forward, uh, to a clean energy future. In Culver City, we've experienced... As I said, young, young people being, uh, you know, diagnosed with asthma from a very young age. We've witnessed people in Culver City and Windsor Hills and the places surrounding the Inglewood oil field 
coming down with aggressive brain cancer. We've witnessed all sorts of horrible effects that we can prevent if we use this field for some other purpose. And I would say if the oil company is really focused on profits, most major economists say that fossil fuels are a bad investment. They are a bad investment in the short term and they are a horrible investment in the long term. So if we really want to make money and invest in the future of our children, and then the future of our uh, current residents and our seniors, we will turn this oil field into a clean energy structure that we can be proud of and that we can say, we stopped this, we moved forward, we changed, we made a difference for the future of our community and the future for our country. I would love it if Governor Brown came down and tour. I would, I would provide him as a personal escort. Me, uh, Councilwoman Megan Sully Wells, uh, Councilman uh, Thomas Small, and Council Councilman Elect Alex Fish. We would love to tour you around this field and show you what exists and what can change. And what's most important is what can change. And what can change cannot. What can change is also valuable for the community, but it, it can also be valuable for the company if their real focus is on making profits. You can make profits with clean energy. We need to, we need to discard the narrative that clean energy is not a profit maker, because it is. If clean energy was subsidized in the way that fossil fuels are subsidized, then it would, it would make incredibly a whole lot more money than oil, coal, and all of the other fossil fuels that we currently depend on. So we need to make that transition and we need to make it now. Thank you so much. Woo! We have with us Andrew Crown, who, uh, uh, Andrew is uh, a, uh, a man who lives near Porter Ranch and has unfortunately been forced because of gas development drilling and extraction injection of gas in Porter Ranch to flee his home and I'd like him to tell you about his story because our call isn't just about oil it's also about fossil fuel natural gas which we do not need to power our electric plants in, in this state where we have a surplus of electricity we do not need our fossil fuel uh, reserves like uh, uh, Aliso Canyon and Andrew can tell you what it has done to his family to live so close to such a dangerous reserve thank you <clears throat> Good morning. Uh, my name is Andrew Crown. I'm a lifelong resident of the northern San Fernando Valley. Uh, my family of five young children were forced from our homes, uh, our home, all sick. Uh, my one-year-old spending a good portion of his life breathing in the uncontrollable amounts of toxic fumes from the Aliso Canyon gas storage facility uh, in Porter Ranch. Uh, I stand here in solidarity with all the other wonderful folks here because the narrative is the same all throughout LA whether it's our family spending five months in a hotel missing birthdays missing anniversaries having children stuck in cars or in a small box because our home and our community is literally killing them to hearing about the oil the issues here in Inglewood in Wilmington in Playa del Rey the symptoms are the same, and I see those every day in my community. The San Fernando Valley is almost two million people who are breathing in the fumes from the Aliso Canyon gas storage facility. Two million people of all races, all ages, all economic standing, all uncontrollably being poisoned by this industry, an industry that Brown supports, whether it be the conflict of interest with his sister Kathleen on the board of Sempra and being unwilling to push them to clean up their act to expanding oil and gas infrastructure in this state. He is literally killing his constituents. As a father, it is heartbreaking to see your six-year-old daughter 
in the fetal position because she can't move because her headache is so intense and her abdominal cramps so intense she can't move. Whether it's your newborn who can't tell you that he's sick, he can only be irritable and it won't go away until you flee the area. Whether it's your wife who can't get out of bed because she has vertigo or another migraine. This is what this industry does to the humans that live near it. And it has to change. I stand today calling on Governor Brown to come down and not only tour this facility, but come back to Aliso Canyon. Come spend time with those who are really affected by all of this dangerous infrastructure, all of these dangerous, decrepit facilities that are in disrepair. Come down and let's talk about how we can convert these fields to renewable energy while providing for California in the 21st century. Thank, Thank you very much. We've got, we've got one last speaker. Uh, and, I, and before I bring him on, I just want to say that you know, Brown's Last Chance Coalition at brownslastchance.com, uh, you'll be able to see the billboards, one of which is right around the corner. There's some in San Francisco and Sacramento that are out to get Governor Brown's attention. The one around the corner says simply, is dirty oil the future you're going to leave our children, Governor Brown? Those questions are going to be posted all around the state, and there's a blimp that Greenpeace has flown across the Bay Area that's got unbelievable aerial photography posted at brownslastchance.com. You can see the, the, the blimp over the Bay Area calling Brown out, and also the blimp over the Richmond refinery, and it's a very different view. Uh, and I suggest see, see anybody on the line look and, and watch that. But my last uh, speaker today is uh, Adam, uh, Adam, from, Adam Scow from Food and Water Watch who's going to talk about the dangers of oil and fossil fuel, natural gas, for our food and water, and why Governor Brown really leads to the heed the lessons of the people who've come forward today. We think uh, Brown really needs to go on a last chance tour. And his last chance tour starts in these oil fields, leads through Aliso Canyon, and Adam Scow is going to be his tour guide. Uh, thank you very much, everybody. Uh, Adam Scout, California Director with Food and Water Watch. Um, as you're learning today, the oil and gas industry is polluting communities. They're poisoning health, but they're also poisoning our water and our food. We know the oil industry contaminates much of our water with toxic chemicals. They don't have a good place to dispose of this water. They're dumping it into our groundwater aquifers. And now the latest trend is that they're using it to grow our food. Uh, over 100,000 acres in Kern County are now being grown with wastewater from oil fields that are being sold on the cheap to big farms that are looking for uh, a cheap way to keep the production high. Uh, there has been no safety tests of this. There's been no independent oversight. And this is a growing practice in California that needs to be stopped until we fully understand the risks. Make no mistake, Governor Brown thus far has been a friend to the oil industry, whether it's allowance of neighborhood drilling, whether it's allowance of fracking, whether it's a cap and trade policy that lets the oil and gas industry just simply pay a little bit to continue business as usual. Uh, Brown has not yet shown that he's willing to step up and take on the oil and gas industry, and he cannot have it both ways. It's not good enough for us to be a leader on solar energy, which we are, and energy efficiency, which we are, and to let the oil and gas industry continue to wreak havoc on our people and our resources. This is indeed Brown's last chance. We hope you'll join us. Thank you very much. We're, we're going to take some questions. And again, we're urging Governor Brown to see us in September at the Global Action Summit with answers and walk hand in hand with a freeze on drilling and a solution to roll back all the oil wells like these behind us in the state. Uh, I'm going to open it for any questions here, and then I'll try to take something on the cell phone, although it's a little windy here. Does anybody have a question uh, around us? I think Governor Brown is seen across the country as probably the biggest <laughs> environmental issues of any governor. Mm -hmm. um, but you're saying it's not going far enough here? Well, Governor Brown is seen as a, as a global climate change leader, and that is why he needs to step up and deal with the principal cause of climate change, fossil fuels. Uh, it's been a lot of kabuki theater, and we are very proud of what the governor's done on the demand side. He needs to address the supply side, which is that we're the third largest oil producing in the state, and he hasn't done a thing to stem one oil well in this state. You know, he complains about President Trump's 
opening up federal offshore drilling, we have over 200 offshore wells and state waters that he has approved. He can shut those down. We are hopeful that the governor is going to be thoughtful, think about the questions we pose today and on the billboards, and join us. But if he ignores us, we will see him in San Francisco. And uh, the whole world will know where he stands. Uh, I, I think he is a wise and thoughtful man who has been constrained by a lot of political considerations. We're asking him to go back to his Jesuit roots, reread his Bible, and consider what happened to the people who spoke today, and re-engage on the issue of what he's going to do to keep oil and gas in the ground. Uh, we're hopeful, but uh, but we're not naive, I think. Um, do you think, Bill, he may be loath to do what you want him to do because of the loss of tax revenue? Any, oh. Company? Oh, I, 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 th I don't think we're going to... We don't have a wellhead tax in the state. We don't collect a single dime of, 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 of tax revenue like they do in Texas on the wellhead here. There's no oil severance tax in the state. So the oil companies, as Daniel Lee has said, have got a free ride because we don't have an oil severance tax. The beauty is we don't need this oil for our refineries. Seventy percent of the oil for the refineries comes from somewhere else. This is dirty oil behind us. The oils running through refineries generally are a lot uh, lighter crude that are not carbon intensive to refine. This crude is not the crude you want to put through a refinery. You want to do something that doesn't take as much energy, doesn't take as much cost. So we would do very well. I'm with Consumer Watchdog by getting out of the dirty oil business in California, getting into the clean sun business because we can get lighter crude that's easier to refine as we do. And ultimately, we won't need it. And the reason we don't need it, we don't need to import crude oil is because we are getting more energy efficient, fuel efficient cars and electric batteries, EV technology is getting so far so quickly that the battery life and the cost of the batteries pretty soon are going to overtake everything else in the market. And that's not even discussing a change somewhere down the road to autonomous vehicles. But we're not planning for it. All we're asking today is Governor freeze the permits and have a plan to roll back the problem. We're not telling them what the we're not telling them what to do. We're telling them, address it. And that seems like a real reasonable request. Does anybody else want to speak on that or get another question? Are there any qu other questions here? Or? Let me try to open the conference line and see if there's a question on the line. might be a little weird. The participant lines are unmuted. Is anybody who's on the conference call want to ask a question? Uh, please identify yourself. Jamie, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. yeah, go ahead. Uh, uh, why don't we do the first person to speak first and the second person after? Go ahead. Sorry, this go ahead. Is, uh, okay. this is Angela. Oh, this is Angela Hart. Yeah, okay, from the B. First. All right, why don't we ask Angela Hart from the B to go, and I'll try to have someone answer the, else answer the question. So go ahead, Angela. So uh, this question is it's Ashley Hernandez still there. Um, I wanted to ask her a little bit more about um, some of the health impacts that um, she's feeling um, from living nearby. The question went to your health. Yeah, um, you know, as, as far as health impacts, a lot of my own experiences have been um, uh, dealing with uh, low heart palpitations when I was when I had just moved into the area when I was around uh, four years old, and so that had never really happened in my family. My siblings dealt with migraines. Friends have dealt with bronchitis, asthma. The list goes on, and I think when it comes to frontline neighborhoods, a lot of the time, these symptoms have been written off as allergies you know oh, my eyes are watery my throat is scratchy my nose is bleeding my, I have a headache it's an allergy there has to be something right that's happening uh, but there really just are the symptoms of uh, of the production that's happening in my neighborhood and uh, I really what it really was the the reason why um, I got involved in my community and wanted to create not only um, awareness, but really get some action on these pieces because it's it's our clear, um, you know, um, basic human rights to clean air and water um, that we don't have, and, and it's important for um, our constituents in the harbor area to have um, a, as healthy as an environment as can be provided. And uh, Andrew Crown, who's here from uh, uh, from Porto, uh, lives near Porter Ranch. I want to just briefly say talk about his personal health impact from living near well, natural yeah, gas. Yeah, yeah I, I can actually expand more on on what oil and gas does uh, to fill a need in our community in the Greater San Fernando Valley. Uh, there was no one collecting symptom data from the exposure to 
uh, the natural gas coming from Aliso Canyon. So I myself developed an app called the Environmental Health Tracker. And to kind of dovetail into your question about symptoms, uh, we have about 1,200 users who have reported about 32,000 symptoms over six months. And all the same, in all these industries and all these areas are the same. There's nosebleeds, there's shortness of breath, vertigo, heart palpitations, uh, can't concentrate, insomnia, abdominal pains, it's all of it. We see these same symptoms, whether it's in, in Torrance, in Wilmington, here in Inglewood, or in the San Fernando Valley uh, near Aliso Canyon. Anyone near oil and gas, we are seeing these symptoms be tracked using EHT. Oh, you have just, Wait, can you guys both spell your name, Ashley and Andrew? Ashley and Andrew, can you spell your name for uh, Angela? We also have a few other folks uh, who are here, but why don't you spell your name? For um, A S H L E Y, Ashley, H E R N A N D E Z Hernandez. And we have two more folks who have specific health problems. I don't know if it's uh, Andrew A N D R E W, Crown K R O W N E. We have one more person who wants to get, get say something about her health. Hi, my name is Monique Uriarte. M O N I C Uriarte U R I A R T E. I'm a former resident for South Los Angeles. And in our personal experience, when my daughter Nas Wine, she star experienced nosebleed, heart palpitation, body spasm. She was not able to walk from one place to another. I need to carry her like a little stick to be able to bring to the emergency room. She has a appointments with neurologists because her extends headaches. She needs appointments with cardiologists, gastroenterologists, and nobody knows what what no what's wrong with my daughter. And unfortunately, was not the only child in our community who experienced those issues. It's the same stories from Porto Ranch, the same story for Wilmington, and it's the, the only industry, the oil industry, to cause these health symptoms. It's time to switch to renewable energy. Thank you. Uh, are, there, are there any other questions uh, out here on the line? There was someone who came behind you, Angela, uh, who, gentleman, I'm sorry to... Do you, are you still with us? You have this is Dan Barker from. Um, hey, Dan. I I want to talk to Ashley again. Um, Ashley. Um, what? Which which um, oil field was she in, and then like what uh, return <laughs> for oil, and is that still continuing? Like, what are the number of oil wells, and how is that impacted the health? Like. Yeah. So. Um, Next to my parents' home, as I mentioned, it's uh, the, the largest oil drilling site west of the Mississippi. That's an expanded lateral drilling site. Um, and from that one location, um, at least uh, around 500 wells are being um, um, tapped, right? And so the impacts that I've dealt with in that neighborhood, and that's just from growing up there, um, we're really kind of just seeing the, the destruction that we, it was causing not only outside in our home, um, but also was happening indoors to us. And um, one of the reasons why I um, essentially got involved with Communities for a Better Environment was because I had to miss uh, around two weeks of school at a point, um, mainly because I was sleeping with my windows open. Uh, what was then recommended by my doctor was that I sleep with my windows closed. And so that really triggered that moment of, I'm not a prisoner in my home and I really shouldn't feel like it. Um, but then realizing that a lot of other neighbors in my area had actually gone through the same thing, had missed school, um, and we had no answers, right? The thing is, there is answers, there are there is this research and I represent it and we really need to make sure that there's an action in order to make sure that oil drilling isn't impacting because um, that particular oil drilling site was violating permits for a really long time as far as flaring on a 24 hours a day and it's right next to a little league baseball field so the impacts were, are something that are ongoing the issue of neighborhood um, oil drilling is still happening to this day and we fought against these oil drilling companies um, so so it's really important for us to make sure that we're holding it accountable um, and continuing to fight for environmental justice thanks Ashley uh, are, are there do you want the field closed down? You want the field closed down. That's should be an easy answer, quick answer. Uh, you know, I definitely, neighborhood drilling doesn't 
belong in any neighborhood, um, especially in the conditions that we have it. So if I had to pick my ideal community, and I'm sure a lot of people will agree with this, no, I would not like to live near oil drilling. Um, so yeah, I think that really answers that that question. So we, we get another question from the line just because we, we got a couple other cameras we have to talk to just got here as well. So I want to close the question. Is there anyone else on the line who wants to ask a question? We're getting a little background noise also from someone on the line. So uh, anybody else want to talk up on the line? If not, I'm going to mute it. And uh, all participants line, they're now muted. <coughs> okay, we're gonna we're gonna it, for 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 folks who want to uh, folks who want to um, you know ask questions later. Uh, the the press release has some numbers on it. We're gonna do the whole press conference again though. Uh, so because we got two more cameras. So. Okay, but I just wanted to mention. Okay, okay we want to have one more person just mention a little about their health impacts, but we're gonna. Sure. Hi, uh, my name is Nikki Wong. Uh, that's spelled N-I-K-I-W-O-N-G, and I am with uh, Redeemer Community Partnership in South LA. Um, I live uh, a five-minute walk away from uh, an oil and gas facility that is one of the ones Martha mentioned earlier that you can place one hand on a bedroom window and place another hand on the drill site facility. Um, it operates extremely close to where families and children live. Some of the health symptoms I have heard from neighbors um, include children developing asthma shortly after moving to the community, um, spontaneous nosebleeds, particularly in young children, um, there's sore throats, there's watery eyes, um, and more recently I've learned that several neighbors um, that live in close proximity to this facility have developed cancer and even passed away. Um, and many others have, um, yeah, have had lung cancer, have had stomach cancer. Um, and, you know, right now at the facility, uh, there is a workover rig up on the site. It's located at Jefferson and Budlong. So if you'd like to go and take a look at what it looks like um, right in the middle of a community, um, yeah, I encourage you all to go and see that. And, yeah, I invite Governor Brown to come to L.A. and see what it's like living next to a facility this close to homes um, and we need to end this infrastructure, and it doesn't. It's fundamentally incompatible with uh, a residential neighborhood. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay. Okay. So um, we're gonna we're gonna for, for two things. One is for folks who want to get the billboard who got the press conference earlier. It's literally around the corner, and Amy, Amy uh, in the back will either walk so you over, or you could pull over the side and explain. For uh, for ABC and Channel Eleven, we're gonna just. Uh, do a little bit more for them, so uh, I'm going to cut uh, cut this off on the speakerphone, and uh, we're just going to do a, a little bit. Yeah, I let you grab. Anybody want to grab a mic? Who's who's already done this? If you want to hang out, that's fine too. You never know what you grab. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it, brother. All right. So uh, we're going to just we're going to do an abbreviation of uh, some of what we talked about. But again, I, I'm I'm Jamie Court. I'm president of Consumer Watchdog, and I'm here with the Browns Last Chance Coalition. This is a, you know, today we're here because more than 750 groups have sent a letter to Governor Brown that asked him to freeze all oil and gas drilling in the state and find a way to roll back the type of fields we see behind us. Governor Brown is going to host a global action summit on climate change in five months from tomorrow. Our colleagues are at the Moscone Center putting him on notice that he needs to address fossil fuels if he's going to address climate change. And we are going to see him in September. Today we're here with members of the community, with members of the community groups, all calling on Brown as part of this coalition of nearly 800 groups to step up, to take a stand, to freeze offshore drilling, urban drilling, all new oil permits. It's an easy thing for him to do by executive order, and he should do it now. And he needs to convene a process and, a, and come up with a plan, or a planning process at least, to roll back all the existing operations because too many people have been hurt by living too close to oil wells. It's got to stop now, and if Governor Brown really wants to be a leader on climate change, he cannot ignore drilling, he cannot ignore fossil fuels. We have at brownslastchance.com an opportunity for people to weigh in with the governor. We have pictures of the blimp that flew over the Bay Area this week, calling Brown out on this issue from Greenpeace. We have 
billboards that are around the corner in San Francisco, in Sacramento, on his road to his ranch, calling for him to take care of the children. We're really asking this question today, is dirty oil the legacy that Governor Brown and Californians are going to leave their children? It can't be. So I'm going to bring up um, uh, first Ashley Hernandez to talk just a little bit about the health problems she faced living near the Wilmington oil wells. Thank you. <clears throat> Hello, my name is Ashley Hernandez. I'm an organizer with Communities for a Better Environment, but more importantly, I am here as a Wilmington resident. Living in Wilmington, I, I didn't know I was living in a ticking time bomb in what is known as ground zero to the big oil. Wilmington is the home to 56,000 residents, as well as the third largest oil field in the nation. We are at the top 5% of the worst, uh, of the highest pollution. And in my community alone, we have over 6,000 oil wells. Near our schools, churches, playgrounds, and directly next to our homes. Frontline residents like myself have represented the health burdens of living near oil drilling, and we deserve better. My parents' first home is 500 feet away from the largest oil drilling site west of the Mississippi River. From their home, they can see the drilling tower, they can feel the house tremors, and they have to deal with the soot that's on every outdoor item. I was one of the kids growing up that had to deal with the asthma, with the nosebleeds and friends that had asthma. I personally had the low heart palpitations. And now as we've gotten older, these stories have changed a little bit and the tone has become a little bit um, more severe as we're dealing with miscarriages, cancer, and the many times we've had to go to emergency rooms. My community isn't safe and our health isn't thriving whatsoever. This is no coincidence. This is deliberate environmental justice. And we must hold Governor Brown accountable on that. We won't tolerate discrimination from our White House, so we shouldn't tolerate it happening in our environmental justice neighborhoods. Governor Brown is not a champion of our frontline communities and is perpetuating environmental racism. We deserve justice at every level, including environmental justice. And let me make it clear, living, growing, and praying near oil drilling is no sanctuary. The cops are here, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna move on to the next speaker before they get too close. Um, Andrew Crown from Porter, Porter Ranch is gonna talk a little bit about uh, the impact of gas, uh, natural gas, uh, fossil fuel on his family. Different area, same impacts. My name is Andrew Crown. I'm a husband and father of five young children. Uh, we live in the shadow of the Aliso Canyon Natural Gas Storage Facility in the northern San Fernando Valley. Uh, that's a constituency of 1.8 million people who have to breathe that air. Uh, all of my children were ill. My wife was ill. I was ill. Headaches, nosebleeds, cramping, insomnia, vertigo, you name it. We spent five months Five months in a one-year-old's life in a hotel, two hotel rooms in Thousand Oaks. These children having to spend good portions of their lives breathing in an unknown cocktail of toxic fumes from this facility. Because our regulators can't force these companies to divulge what it is that's coming out of the ground. What it is that's falling in soot on our homes and what, is, what it is that we're breathing. So I started tracking this information because no one else will, no one else was. The Department of Health wasn't, my county wasn't, and the doctors had no idea what was going on. So I developed an app for my community, for all of the San Fernando Valley, so the people who were feeling the effects of the Aliso Canyon SS25 well blowout could start tracking what was going on in their bodies, which as you hear is similar to what's going on with residents near this facility and down in Wilmington as well. In this short time, we're seeing the illness is staggering. It's unmistakable, and it's something that our regulators and our government and, and Governor Brown cannot ignore. This is his last chance to do what is right. He has a moral obligation to protect human life, not an obligation to protect oil and gas. Thank you. We, we're fortunate, thank you, Andrew, to have Daniel Lee, who is a Culver City Councilman, representing the areas and the communities touched by the oil fields behind us, uh, who's going to talk about the health impacts that some of his uh, constituents have faced and why 
this field can't be allowed to be expanded. Governor Brown is being asked today by almost 800 groups to freeze oil drilling. Well, Daniel Lee's constituents will be impacted because the owners of this field want to expand it, and Governor Brown can stop them. Thank you, Daniel. I want to start off by saying uh, something that's, I think, very simple, uh, but it's impossible to address climate change without addressing the use of fossil fuels. And I want to repeat that again. It is impossible to address climate change without addressing the use of fossil fuels. And that's what we're talking about today with the Inglewood oil field. I represent Culver City, 10% of the Inglewood oil field is in Culver City. Uh, the Inglewood oil field is the largest urban oil field in the United States. Um, we need to close it down. We need to transition it to a more equitable use that will not affect the health and safety of the people of Culver City and the people in the surrounding area of Los Angeles County. I've heard numerous stories about young people coming down with asthma at a very, very, very young age. And part of that can be attributed to our incredible uh, Los Angeles air, uh, but a very significant proportion of that and a very significant proportion of people close to the Inglewood oil field uh, have increased instances of asthma beyond young people. There is an, an incredibly uh, pernicious uh, epidemic of aggressive brain cancer as well, which is directly attributable to oil operations. What we need to do to protect the health and safety of our people in Culver City and in Los Angeles County is to transition this field into a more equitable and healthy use. We need a solar field. We need a wind and solar farm if, 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 if people are not open to just solar. We need to get off of our fossil fuel addiction. And then if Governor Brown is serious, and I hope he is, but if he is serious, then he needs to address fossil fuels directly. And this field is one of the ways that he can show true leadership and not just some, you know, Facebook anti-Trump agenda. Thanks. Um, I just want to say that the sheriff departments across the street, they're on our tail. It would be nice to see the governor bring the sheriff out to evict the oil drillers rather than to keep an eye on the people who are trying to protect people's health. Um, it's, uh, it's, uh, it, 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 you know, it's really listening to the people who've talked today, you realize that this is a very personal issue. It's not esoteric. And one of the big issues for all of us is our food and our water because oil can get in it. So I'm going to bring up Adam Scow from Food and Water Watch to talk a little about how whether you live near an oil well or not, it impacts your life. Thank you, everybody. Adam Scow, California Director with Food and Water Watch. Honored to be here, and thank you, to members of the press, for attending this event today. Uh, in addition to poisoning our communities, the fossil fuel industry now has their targets on our food supply. Indeed, Chevron is selling its toxic wastewater to farms in the Central Valley to grow our food, some of which is organic, and is being sold in our stores, and we're feeding it to our kids and our families and in our schools every day. There's no independent oversight of this process. We don't know if it's safe. In addition to that, the toxic wastewater is sometimes dumped into aquifers uh, near drinking water sources. So Governor Brown needs to get over his friendship with the fossil fuel industry. He needs to be a tough governor and stop favoring the oil and gas industry. It's not enough to talk about climate change. It's time to do something about it. And as uh, Daniel Lee said, we can't do anything about it until we uh, reduce uh, the fossil fuel supply. So we need the, the governor to be strong, and we're waiting for him because thus far he hasn't done it. Thank you. There is again a billboard within a couple of blocks of here uh, at Stocker when you come south that really raises the question about these oil fields. Is dirty oil the legacy we're going to leave our children? So uh, people can uh, get a little direction from Amy how to get there if you want to shoot it. But again, this uh, event is in conjunction with our colleagues in San Francisco who are in front of the Moscone Center, and uh, the nearly 800 groups assembled are really sending a message to the governor that if he wants his Global Action Summit to be a success, he needs to address the concerns of the people we have heard from today, 
We're calling on the governor to come tour this oil field to meet Ashley, to meet all the people here who've had an impact, to meet Andrew, to go to Porter Ranch, to talk to the people. Because the problem with dirty oil is it hurts good people. He needs to focus on the people who he represents, not the industries that have helped him politically. He's going to leave office. This is the time to do the right thing, and we hope he'll step up. So thank you all for coming, and if you have any questions, we'll be hanging around a little bit.